I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. There's so much about this quote that just feels Christmassy to me. You know, David's name is mentioned, the bright and morning star. Star. You know, you hear it. You, what, what, you know, did Isaiah say that? Was that Isaiah making it? Well, it's from the book of Revelation. It's almost from the very end of the word. But there's something about the imagery here. Uh, but doesn't the morning star appear in that second evening you've been talking about? The, before the dawn? Sure. And that's exactly what I, this photo is, is purporting to show. There's the moon. Okay. Can you see uh, Venus is the morning star, right? <laughs> Do you I know? Don't know. I think Venus is the morning star. That looks like a cruise ship here. I think that's, that's supposed to be Venus right there, the morning star. Um, I don't know if it's possible actually to capture a photograph that would get the light of Venus and the beginning of the dawn. I'm not sure, um, but it's a pretty picture. I, I think it's kind of nice. You know, another sort of keynote passage I was thinking of that I, uh, it's, a, it's a famous one. There's, it's words to a Christmas song. Stephen Cole preached a sermon about it, and that's a good one. I listened to that one this week. That's pretty good, too. Not as good as Walter's, but it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Watchman, what of the night? Yeah, and so the Watchman says, morning comes, and also the night. I had intended to dig into that and talk about that today, and I realized at 1 o'clock this afternoon that I had forgotten to do that. So that's another good one. But we're starting today with, I am the root and offspring of David, not specifically associated with Christmas, but it's the, the Lord in the world, the, the divine human. And this is one place that we can see this identity that is drawn. It is called the morning star because the morning symbolizes the Lord's advent. When he came into the world and established a, a new church. Morning, that's what we're talking about today, the time of day that we are talking about today is morning, and morning is a, signifies as a symbol of the Lord's advent. Going back to last week, so there's this one explanation of Zechariah's prophecy. When the Lord was born, it was then evening. It is in quotation marks because I think it really is talking about an evening state, not necessarily a time of day. And then meanwhile, we have the morning symbolizes the Lord's advent. So there's the birth of the Lord and the advent of the Lord. The birth of the Lord, the advent of the Lord. They're kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Are they exactly the same thing? I, I don't think so. And, the, and, and I sort of think, well, they can't be. If, the, if there's this important symbol of the evening in the Lord's birth, but then, well, morning is the Lord's advent. So something I just want to sort of keep in our, the back of our minds as we go through these things is, uh, what's the difference? If the Lord was born in the evening, but it wasn't till morning that his advent was represented, what might that mean? So morning represents the Lord's, represents the Lord's advent. So here's a little chart that I've made. And, you know, morning, noon, evening, night, we saw things last week that said those are the four natural phases of time in the course of a day. Now I've backed it up, so I have an extra evening and an extra night here. So evening, night, morning, noon, evening, night. And I put vertical lines here to mark what midnight is. Because when you and I are talking about one day, I think that's what we think of. Mm -hmm. When's tomorrow? Tomorrow's at midnight tonight when it becomes tomorrow. I think that's what we mean. So if I'm, Jennifer asked the question earlier, so was the Lord born on Christmas Eve? And that, well, no, he, the Christmas day is the Lord's day of birth. That's the day we mark the Lord's birth into the world. So that's, you know, the Christmas, okay, Christmas Eve is what it is up until midnight on December 24th. And then midnight comes on December 24th, and then it's Christmas Day. Aunt Greta. Well, of course, as shepherds saw that star at night, and are you thinking that it might not have been until the very end of Christmas Day that they came? Could have been, but what I'm going to do is actually move it all to the left. That's what I'm going to do. So you see what I just did there? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, well, the Jewish day, but, you know, I was doing some research on that this week, and nobody agrees 
When's the end of the day? When's the beginning of the day? Now, since the Egyptians and especially the Romans, a lot of us agree that the day ends at the opposite side of noon, which is midnight. So that's sort of become the standard for centuries, for millennia maybe. But people, it's true, what people consider to be a day is a little more fluid than that. So I'm going to say... I'm, what I'm calling Christmas Day for the purposes of what we're talking about here and now in this room today, Christmas Day actually starts in the evening of the 24th. I'm just wanting to say that. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is just me just redefining what Christmas Day is. So Christmas, Christmas Eve is part of Christmas Day. There's a 24-hour period. And you know, by the time you get to 5 o'clock on the 25th, haven't you had enough anyway? <laughs> So, so that's what I'm thinking. That's, is that clear? That, that I'm thinking of a 24-hour period that doesn't start at midnight, but that starts at 4 or 5 or 6. Walter. Um, just to show how arbitrary, in a way, the midnight line is, I, I'm often checking my email at, you know, a quarter to 12 or 10 to 12. Uh, and then if you check it 15 minutes later, stuff that came in 15 minutes last ago, week, it, it says yesterday. Yeah, yeah. or even like last week, if it's a, my, <laughs> the, my email program, if it's, I think, set, if it's Saturday night, and then it goes after midnight on Saturday night, it'll say, oh, you got this email last week, yeah. five yeah. minutes ago, but that was last week. Yeah. Yeah, so it's arbitrary. So I am arbitrarily saying this is what Christmas Day is for the purpose of what we're talking about but maybe for the purpose of our recognition and celebration of the Lord's birth into the world. Here's my speculative timeline. So here, this is the picture of the prophet Zechariah that I showed you last week, who talks about a light about the time of evening, which is a prophecy of the Lord's birth into the world. Not necessarily literally evening, but gee, maybe the Lord was born on the evening, going into the day, well, and it wasn't December 25th, but... So, Jennifer, you asked, was the Lord born on Christmas Eve? Yes. And I believe, Chris, for the purposes of what we're talking about, Christmas Eve is part of Christmas Day. Can you tell yeah. me the it's, it's chapter 14, verse 7. Thank you. What else do we know about the timeline of the first Christmas Day? Well, we know for sure, right? The shepherds were keeping watch by night. So that's definitive. There's, I'm not even speculating there. I'm telling you what we know from the word. Shepherds were keeping watch by night. So what might have happened in the morning time on the first Christmas day? So here's my speculation. Well, let me just show you a picture. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Biblische uh, scene. So I'm assuming that means... Bible scene by Julius Schnorr von Carolsfeld, a German illustrator, 1855. Can you see what's going on in this picture? He was a painter, but I think this was a pencil study for a painting. I'm not, I don't think he ever did this painting or not. You can see the, the nativity scene back here. There's angels up here. I think he's actually showing a night sky. But the, here's the shepherds with their backs to the nativity. What's going on here? They're running to tell people. They're leaving. They are making known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And I'm speculating that didn't happen until the sun had come up the day, further into the day, I should say. Not the day after, but further into that day. And uh, is there any evidence that it, the sun was up? I mean, they made known abroad the sayings that they had heard concerning this child, and all who heard them, so they weren't shouting into the dark, they were talking to people. And actually, the way Mr. Schnorr von Carolsfeld, you know, the, it looks like people are coming out of their doors, so maybe he's, and, and it looks like a night sky that he's drawing in the background there. So did they go around actually and pound on people's doors and wake them up to let them know what they had seen, what, the, what had been told them concerning this child? I'm just going to say, and this is just me making an assertion, that it was the, the morning had dawned. The Lord's advent, so, and what's the difference between birth and advent? Uh, 
well, you know, birth can be reduced to a biological event. Advent is when people start to recognize it. People start to hear about it. People start to talk about it. So in the morning, if the morning is when the Lord's Advent happened, maybe the shepherds making known abroad the saying that was told them concerning this child, maybe that's when the Lord, we could say the Lord's Advent really at least got started because people were talking about it. People were sharing what they knew. I'm going to color code these three arrows to show you the relative safety or lack thereof to follow me here. So green, that's safe because it says the shepherds were by night in the field. Yellow, I've got some evidence that's telling me the Lord maybe was born in the evening time, going into the night time when the shepherds were in the field. Orange for uh, making known abroad because uh, don't necessarily trust me on that. I'm letting you know I am not trustworthy. But it seems like I'm making a good argument, aren't I? I'm making a good case, don't you think? The shepherds, they, they so, you know, they, uh, in Stephen's sermon about uh, Watchmen Tell Us of the Night, talked about hasting in the dark. They were hasting in the dark to go find the baby. But if they were out in the fields getting into the town of Bethlehem to find where the Lord was laid in a manger and to spend some time there and then to start going around making known abroad the sayings which were told them concerning this child, that would have taken some time. Maybe the sun was up by then. Speculation. Who knows? 